also a middle tire. Uh, that middle tire consists of OLAP server and OLAP server, we already know that online analytical processing tool uh, that can be implemented with the help of either ROLAP, that is relational OLAP or MOLAP, that is multi-dimensional OLAP. Now, relational OLAP is an extended relational GBMS that maps function on multi-dimensional data to standard relational operations. So whenever we have a term like relation, so I hope you know that that relation always tries to mean some structured way of uh, organizing the data or keeping the data. Uh, in many cases, we actually refer table with the help of the term relation. So the so the OLAP server, this OLAP server can be implemented either with the help of ROLAP, that is relational OLAP, and a multidimensional OLAP. Now multidimensional OLAP is a server where we try to focus on many different attributes. Okay, many different attributes will be considered for multi-dimensional OLAP and relational OLAP, we try to focus on tabular structure. Now, top tire, okay, this is just a kind of revision as we have already discussed the top tire, middle tire and bottom tire. So top tire that contains prawn and tools for displaying results provided by OLAP and some tools for data mining of the OLAP generated data. Remember the diagram that I have shown in the last class. Um, from there, I, I hope that you can recall that the first layer that is the topmost layer always tries to uh, facilitate the communications with the outside users. So for that, we should have some tools. And among them, of course, whenever the data I mean, uh, business intelligence is concerned, then we really need these data mining tools. And about the data mining, different algorithms, different techniques, we'll, we are going to discuss this after the finish of this uh, data warehouse classes. Now, look at the diagram again. Query, report, analysis, data mining. So which layer is this one? This is the first or topmost layer, okay? Then middle, middle layer is this one, okay? Where we have OLAP servers and the bottom most layer is the layer from where actually we are getting our data like operational database or different other sources like your Excel sheets. So from there extract clean load to this middle layer. Then from the middle layer, as part of the requirement, we'll have this either query report, analysis, data mining tools. There are different other tools there. And as I have already told you, we we'll frequently use this one. Now, metadata, as we have already discussed about metadata, metadata means what? Which data keeps information about the other data. So the metadata repository stores information that defines this DW, the data warehouse objects, in, includes the following parameters information for the middle and top tier. And what are they? Let's see, what are they? This description of DW structure, including the warehouse schema, dimension, hierarchies, data mart locations, then operational metadata, which usually describes the currency level of the stored data, like active, R, R shift or parse. Uh, this term parse is very important. I, I know that you know already because in our DBMS class, there also practically we have uh, gone through this uh, parse keyword. Okay. So uh, again, asking you the same question that how this parse is different from delete or truncate. Or is there any relation of this word parse with those delete and truncate? 
today at least go through it and let me know. So this active archive and the sparse warehouse monitoring information. Monitoring information is nothing but the statistics of the users, error reports, audit, etc. Then system performance data, which includes indices used to improve the data access and retrieval performance. Information about the mapping from the operational database, which provides source RDBMS and the contents and the cleansing and transformation rules. Then summarization algorithms, predefined queries and report business data that includes business terms, definition, ownership information. So overall, this many informations we may find from the metadata. Okay, so let's have a summary on this. The three tier architecture, it consists of source layer, reconciled layer, and the data warehouse layer containing both data warehouse and data merge. This reconciled layer, sometimes see the terms will be a little bit uh, different, like the reconciled layer that sits between the source data and the data warehouse. See, uh, from this figure, you try to identify which will be the which one will be the reconciled layer. Okay. Now, what is the advantage of this reconciled layer? In exam, directly question may come that what do we understand by reconciled layer, and uh, what are the benefits if we implement this layer? The main advantage of the reconciled layer is that it creates a standard reference data model for a whole enterprise. So it creates what standard reference model. At the same time, it separates the problems of source data extraction and integration from those of data warehouse population. So two things reconciled layer does. First, standard reference data model. Okay, it tries to maintain it that model, the reference model, you already know that's kaha kaha kya kesi sapne rakha hai, thikhe? So that standard reference model for the whole enterprise. Saat mein kya karte hai? At the same time, it separates the problems of source data extraction and integration from those of the data warehouse population. So hamesha, in case of the data warehouse, very important is what? Separation. Okay, separation in the sense that uh, the source data extraction and integration. These, these two are different things. Source data extraction means we are collecting the data from different sources and integration means we are trying to combine them, we are trying to integrate them. Okay, so it, it this, this reconciled layer tries to maintain a separation between them. Also in some cases, the reconciled layer is directly used to accomplish better some operational tasks like producing daily reports, that cannot be satisfactorily prepared using the corporate applications or generating data flows to feed external processes periodically to benefit from the cleansing and integration. So, kabi kya hota hai? Ke so record, as it reconcile layer record, so hai daily report, so hai. Ye produce karne ke liye hum use nahi karte. We are not going to use the reconcile layer to produce a report. But in some cases, when the others fails to give you the satisfactory report, then we also re means uh, depend on this layer for such reports. Because you know the reconciled layer is directly working on that part. Extraction of the data from different sources and the integration of them, a reference model between them. So it's, it will be very easy to find out a better report from those data. So that is one more task or one you can say advantage of the reconciled layer. Now, do remember, as this is a three-tier architecture, may, may not be um, uh, all the organizations are following this. Someone will ask you why, what is the reason behind that this, this that, uh, that our house architecture is not used by all. The uh, reason is very simple, it is complicated. Okay, if you can means uh, adopt this, or if you are means able to adopt this, then only you can go, go for implementing this okay because this is uh, so that's why i'm mentioning here that this theta architecture is specially useful only for some extensive enterprise wide system okay extensive enterprise wide system so the simple hey, so, um, 
what I can say, which is not a kind of big organization where data is not that much uh, huge, then we don't think that this data warehouse architecture is suitable for Yeah, you can use that, but only if you can afford this. Okay. Okay. Now, one more disadvantage if someone asks you that what will be the other disadvantage of this three tier data warehouse architecture? So, the diagram you have seen, which we have discussed with you, you will have to understand that we have given you this. That we are giving you extra effort so that we can separate the data. To separate the data means you are keeping the data in different places. Okay? Like you have kept the data in data extraction, and then you have kept the integration. So, what will be the main thing? You can say as a disadvantage of this three-tier architecture, because it is going to consume extra file storage space. Okay, this three-tier architecture is going to consume extra file storage space that will be used for this redundant reconciled layer. Look, I have told you a little bit earlier that the reconciled layers are here. Yeah, it's a very good thing. This is our separation, which is right. उसको बहुत अच्छे से मेंटेन कर रहे हैं, but इसी के साथ इसका डिसएडवांटेज भी है और डिसएडवांटेज ये आपके ऊपर है, आपके ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के ऊपर है कि कितना आप एफोर्ड कर पाओ, हाँ, तो जो रिडंडेंट, I have used the term redundant here, क्योंकि जब ये रिकॉन्सल लेयर नहीं होगा, क्या हमारे डाटा वर्हाउस आर्किटेक्चर पॉसिबल नहीं है विदाउट � you may not get that 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 satisfactory result if it, it this reconciled layer is not available. Okay, so someone says that uh, what is the disadvantage? Asks you that what is the disadvantage of this direction? Answer is very simple. It is complicated, and second, uh, that extra file storage space that will be used for extra redundant reconciled layer. Okay. Now it also makes the analytical tools a little farther away from being real time. Now what is this? You know, uh, this this data architecture where we are using different tools. Uh, apart as you can see that data mining layer means tools we are applying. Okay. So when we apply this data mining tools, we need some active or we need some online data also. If you understand, if you go, when we'll discuss data mining, then that will be very uh, means understandable to you because till now we have not yet discussed any algorithm of data mining. So data mining actually uh, we use for finding the hidden pattern out of the huge data. Okay, is this possible here? Yes, it is possible, but it needs what? a uh, means what I can say more than average kind of analytical capability that that is not possible in real life if uh, the person concerned on that administration is not from that background you know that the organization persons that uh, managers they may not be from the, uh, this IT background or who may have some data mining uh, ability yes if they have then that is very good but otherwise it is far from that real uh, means world. Okay, real world in the sense that they can understand the report, but if they need to find out that whose algorithm they need to use for those type of data, then I think that that will that may be a complicated part for them. So you may consider it as a disadvantage, or you may not. It's actually the bench. So that's all for today. And uh, with that, we have completed all the mentioned different types of data warehouse architectures. And in the next class, we are going to start with some schemas. And I think that that will be very, very important for you because after that, we'll directly come to the data mining portion. We are at the end of the first unit. So very soon we'll complete that and we'll come to the data mining part. Thank you. Yes.